Morning Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Thanksgiving curfew is underway here in Bear County. We hear from bar owners about how it's going to affect their business. On this Black Friday, some troubling signs for the U.S. economy. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The latest on the pandemic's impact coming up. Take a look outside with live cam. 68 degrees feels muggy. I had some raindrops, very few, far and few in between raindrops on my windshield. And is rain in our future this morning? Justin is in for Mike. And let us know. Good morning. It is Friday, November 27th. Thank you so much for starting your Black Friday with us. How was your Thanksgiving? Um, I feel 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you look fantastic. You know what's really cute? Mm. Stuffing your face and then coming on TV the next morning. Mm. I think yeah. all of us feel like the salt and the... I feel great. I feel oh, fantastic. Okay. Justin, uh, how are you feeling this morning? I love everything about it. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> was good. The food was good. I feel good this morning. We got rain on the radar. You got a little yes. Auburn in your beard. A uh, little, little That's red. good. Yeah, thank you. Thank oh. you. It's almost time to say goodbye. I don't so close it. yet so far. Yeah, but guys, the, the rain's a good thing. It really yeah. is. It's been such a long while since we've seen it. It's uh, on the radar this morning. We're going to see it through much of today, or at least part of today, and then some pretty good chances coming up tomorrow. So the, the radar right now shows we've got some passing showers coming through Bear County. You valley down towards Eagle Pass. Most of this is light right now, but I can't rule out a couple of rumbles of thunder as the frontal battery gets a little bit closer uh, to us. We may get some storms. A uh, little closer look here at San Antonio. It's all really light, as Sarah pointed out, just so, sort of uh, some light sprinkles at the moment, but that may pick up some next couple of hours. We're getting some moderate rain around Uvalde, Sabinal, and the Eagle Pass as well. And then looking across some of our eastern counties, some heavier pockets of rain down towards Victoria and Beeville. This is the most widespread rain we've seen in probably two months. And uh, temperature wise, still warm. We're at 70 degrees, Port SA 68 at the airport. It should cool down a little bit this afternoon once we get that front through here. So here's how I think it plays out. 60% chance of rain through the morning time, 68 at 9 o'clock, 71 noon time. Rain chances will taper off a little bit this afternoon and then pick back up tonight into tomorrow. How much rain can we see? We're going to take a look at that coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick now. There could be some wet roads. How are things looking this morning? Yeah, definitely wet when I was driving in today. Justin, please be careful out there. Watch your speed. Use those headlights and just drive safely because uh, it is a little bit wet. All right, a lot of green on the screen, though. Talk to my friends at TransGuide. Nothing going on right now. No construction. So it is a smooth ride if you are headed uh, anywhere right now in the city. Let's take a look at 10 in Callahan. Flowing smoothly there, both east and westbound. 90 at Couples. Westbound looks very good eastbound no cars and uh, 281 loop 410 by the airport looking great all right max sir back to you thanks nick bear county judge nelson wolf and mayor ron nuremberg doing all they can to help stop the spread of covid 19. the thanksgiving weekend curfew is now underway so this curfew goes from 10 p.m to 5 p.m people are not allowed to gather outside of their households during these curfew hours except when they're seeking services from a business restaurants are going to have to be closed for dine-in services at 10 p.m but curbside drive through and takeout services can still run. Individuals and businesses who violate these curfews could face a fine of up to $1,000. Important to mention, though, the curfew ends Monday. A local bar owner fears the temporary countywide curfew will lead to permanent problems. Don Marsh is the owner of Bar 1919 off of South Alamo. Marsh says the holiday weekend is crucial in the industry. Although he says business is improving, he was hoping for another boost over the weekend. But now with a temporary curfew, he's unsure of what to expect. Thanksgiving night, Black Friday, the weekend, everybody's off. I mean, these are easy money days for the bar business. And now it's been, again, taken away from us. The temporary order was announced Wednesday following a rise in COVID-19 cases. And it is the day after Thanksgiving. That usually means big sales, but on this Black Friday, there's some troubling signs for economic recovery, even as online retail sales are projected to surge. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. As COVID cases spike nationwide and the daily death toll remains near record highs, the economic toll of the virus is also mounting. The latest report from the Labor Department showing another 778,000 Americans filed new unemployment claims last week. That was a troubling uptick for the second week in a row, with more than 20 million people now collecting some form of jobless benefits. For me and my family, it's been, it's been tough. 
An estimated 50 million people are now facing food insecurity, up 43 percent since before the pandemic. Happy Thanksgiving! On Thanksgiving, Americans waiting hours in line for food with no other choice but to go hungry. I have nothing at home. Seriously, nothing. So this is a huge help today. It sure is. Economic stimulus programs like expanded unemployment aid that have provided lifelines for millions of Americans during this recession are set to run dry at the end of the year. With no economic relief in sight and COVID cases surging again, recent retail sales and consumer spending data raising alarms the recovery is stalling. And yet the nation's economic disparities on full display as the stock market surges. The stock market's just broken 30,000, never been broken, that number. While many stores close their doors for in-person shopping amid the pandemic, online retail sales are expected to increase between 20 to 30 percent this holiday season, topping $218 billion. Americans fortunate enough to have cash pent up, making purchases earlier than ever online. I'm done Christmas shopping. I did it all online with pickup like this. It's tremendous. President-elect Joe Biden is expected to announce key members of his economic team next week. Among his picks is former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen, who'd be the first woman to be Treasury Secretary. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, President Donald Trump is planning to campaign in Georgia ahead of the Senate runoff election. The president is planning to be in Georgia December 5th for a campaign event supporting Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. The January 5th runoff election could change the balance of power in the Senate. If either incumbent Republican wins, the party will remain in control of the chamber. However, if Democratic challengers both win, Democrats could gain control of the Senate. And heading overseas, Russia says it has successfully test launched a hypersonic cruise missile. The Russian Defense Ministry released a short video on its YouTube channel showing the launch back on Thursday. This was all part of trials of their new weapons, according to the statement from Russia's defense ministry. The hypersonic missile was fired from a location in the White Sea. It hit a target in the Barents Sea at a 450 kilometer distance and developed a speed of over Mach 8. That is over eight times the speed of sound. Investigators at Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center have found that the mitochondria can be adversely impacted by changes in gravity and radiation exposure. The findings are based on data from both mice and humans that have traveled to space. Researchers discovered that isolated cells were more adversely impacted than whole organs. One of the most noticeable changes was in the liver. The scientists are hoping to use this information to help tailor radiation therapy for cancer patients. Time now, 437, 68 degrees out. Well, despite CDC warnings, millions of Americans are traveling this weekend after spending the holidays with their loved ones. Why this could negatively impact the current state of the U.S. And if you want to take nice pictures with your family this holiday season, but you want to hire a professional, we have some tips on how you can do it yourself next on GMSA. Nice pictures with the family. I hate taking pictures after Thanksgiving. You feel like super. No, you got to take the pictures before. Oh, I know, but my dad's the worst about that. He's like, let's take pictures now. And you take it with the turkey <laughs> before it's all carved up. <laughs> Picture perfect weather, not so much today, but we really need the rain. Justin will explain when we come back. Smile. <laughs> with the holiday season officially underway, it's that time of year for taking holiday family photographs. So you can hire a professional, but what about snapping the pictures yourself? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore, it says with a little practice, an eye for lighting and the right gear, you can capture the perfect holiday portraits. David Morgan uses photography as a powerful tool for self-expression. I think I was about 15 or 16 when I bought my first secondhand camera. I really was using it as an outlet to explore sort of what blackness looked like and meant for me. To capture someone else's personality, he first focuses on building a relationship. Then there's lighting to make sure a subject shines. If you're photographing someone with a deeper skin tone, you really want to think about the ways in which the light is reflecting on their skin. Pay attention to if someone has dark hair. So think about where the light is hitting their hair and what you want to capture in your frame. Next, there's the camera. If you're looking for portability and fast photo sharing options, smartphone cameras will do 
the job. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G and Apple iPhone 12 Pro have the best smartphone cameras, according to Consumer Reports testing. Look to see if your phone has a portrait mode. It will digitally create a shallower depth of field by blurring the background of your image, helping your subject to pop. Want next level? Consumer Reports says digital SLR cameras that take interchangeable lenses have the most features. The Canon EOS 6D Mark II and the Nikon D750 are two top-rated SLRs. As for David, his seasonal advice? Embrace the holiday cheer. Definitely embrace the kitsch, the sweet, all the things that make the holiday great because it makes for a really great photo. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So you guys have a professional camera. You may put it all out there. You know, but this year we didn't take a picture because mm. we had our family's been, you know, we're isolating very small groups. So I'm not a big picture fan. So mm. I'm actually pretty happy about it. Which that. is weird because you're on camera every Which day. Which is why I'm not, <laughs> I have to deal with it. I don't want to take another picture. Lighting is crucial. It is. All right, time now, 443, 68 degrees out. J-Lo getting a lot of attention on social media after releasing that cover of her new single. Why the cover is attracting more attention than the song itself still ahead. And despite the CDC recommendations for people to stay home this Thanksgiving, millions of people are traveling around the country. The latest on GMA says first look next. This morning, millions of people are heading home after Thanksgiving, despite those strong warnings from the CDC to stay home and not travel. ABC's Gio Bonitas has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, preparing for this Sunday's travel crush. For weeks, public health officials warned not to travel, but more than 6 million people still flew, tens of millions more on the roads. Sunday, expect another busy travel day as people return home. More than a million expected at airports alone. TSA says it's ready to open as many lanes as needed to allow for social distancing. And if you look at national data, most passengers uh, waited less than eight or nine minutes if they were a standard passenger. And then if you're a pre-check passenger, you're going to wait on the order of two or three minutes. And coming up at 7 a.m., for those of you who've chosen shopping over travel, we've got you covered, too, with all the best Black Friday deals to help you save big. I'm done Christmas shopping. I did it all online with pickup like this. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. All right, one of the staples, obviously, of Thanksgiving is watching football. Our own resident Cowboys fan, Nick Solis, with the traffic. So, Nick, more people on the roads or more people in the Cowboys end zone? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Max, yes. I didn't have a good uh, end to my Thanksgiving, thanks to the boys. But it's okay. I got I get to be here. Traffic's looking good right now. Could be a little dangerous out there because of the roadway, so please be careful. It's a little slick in some spots. Drive safely, please. Go the speed limit. Two hands on the steering wheel and wear your seatbelt. All right. Uh, 281 at the river looks good right now. Not even a car on the roadway. There's one coming up northbound, so things look good right now if you're headed out, out that way. Uh, 1604 in Kyle Sill on the northwest side of town. That looks good as well. And 35 at St. Mary's flowing smoothly. Uh, just please get to work if you have to go to work very safely. All right, so you were saying roadways are wet. Justin, are we going to see rain throughout the day? Uh, I think we'll see it for the first half of the day, maybe a little bit of a break, and then it picks back up again tomorrow. So we have some chances here and there. Most of what we're seeing this morning is pretty light. Uh, you see on the radar there, it's it's fairly active, uh, but uh, some showers uh, still ongoing there from Hondo to Uvalde down to Pleasanton. And we're seeing some light rain starting to move in here to Bear County. And a little closer look at San Antonio. It's mostly the north side right now where we're seeing some of that white rain. But you see the batch out to the west. This will be shifting in. So we'll have more chances here in the next couple of hours. Uh, down to the south. Some pockets of moderate rain here moving through uh, Victoria uh, down towards Beeville, and this will cross over Interstate 37 here. Everything's moving southwest to northeast as we get some Pacific moisture starting to stream in here. Uh, so there's there's a lot to work with, and this is the best weather pattern we've seen in about two months, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, very encouraging. 68 degrees at the airport right now, 70 in Stinson, 70 at Kelly and winds are generally pretty light. We'll have to watch out for some fog this morning. There's enough moisture there with the light winds. Uh, visibility may come down in a few spots. You look at the dew points, they're still relatively high. Dew points in the low 60s, that's still sticky. Uh, actually, dew points in the 70s down to the south and east, so there's a lot of moisture there too. 
And as that front runs into some of this moisture, uh, we should see those rain chances increase a little bit this morning. Current temperatures 68 degrees here in town, 61 Kerrville, 68 in Uvalde, 76 in Beeville. That's pretty warm. Uh, our front still sits off to our north behind it. There is some cooler air and we can expect some of that. Uh, it'll be a gradual thing today, though it's not going to be like you're going to feel the front and then all of a sudden it's going to turn cold. It'll take some time here, but it will get uh, colder by tonight and into tomorrow. Here's the current setup. You see some of the clouds working in from the south and west. We have our upper level low back off to the west. This is actually pulling in some decent Pacific moisture on top of the moisture we have from the Gulf of Mexico. So it, it, it's a good setup for us where we could see some uh, pretty decent uh, rainfall, I think, over the next couple of days. Here's how the forecast plays out. That front starts to shift south. With it, we see some rain, but notice by 4 o'clock, there's a little bit of a break in the action, and I think that probably continues into this evening. But as we get into tomorrow morning, radar fills back in. We see more showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms, and then some pockets of heavier rain, especially out to the east. This is around noontime tomorrow. And then I think by about 5 o'clock, we'll start to see the rain ending west to east. We'll get clearing, and by Sunday, we're looking at sunny skies. It'll be a little bit breezy. There is a marginal risk of some stronger storms today, mainly south of San Antonio, as that front runs into some of that deeper moisture. And we talked about the rainfall a little bit. I think San Antonio is probably going to see somewhere on the order of a half an inch to an inch, maybe up to an inch and a half if you're lucky. Some bigger numbers off to the east, maybe up to about two inches, Gonzales, LaGrange, Victoria. And if you're west of town, we're probably looking at about a half an inch. But you know what? We'll take it. With the drought situation that we're in, this is, again, really good to see. 60% chance of rain first half of the day. And then we'll taper that off to a 40% chance this afternoon. We should top out in the 70s, probably midday, and then those numbers will start to fall. 58 tomorrow, that's it. 80% chance of rain, breezy, cloudy, cool. 65 on Sunday. And then we've got to point out Tuesday morning, look at that, 31. We could see our first freeze here in San Antonio as some cooler air works in. Uh, so something to keep tabs on next week. San Antonio, who are you? 31. Finally. Wow, I might have to actually bring in some of my plants. <laughs> yep. Wow. Thank you, Justin. 451, 68 degrees out. Disney Plus is releasing a new docu-series about students at the American School, uh, the School of American Ballet in New York City. We have a preview next. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, five, one, five, fireball, zero, daily four, seven, six, four, seven, fireball, one. Cash five, 12, 14, 17, 18, 32, Texas two-step, Four, 13, 21, 34, bonus ball four. Good morning, welcome back and happy Friday. One of the stars of the show, The Good Doctor, now opening up with his battle with COVID-19. From TV to music for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Ramona Puga. Learning lessons. One of the stars of ABC's The Good Doctor is opening up about his battle with COVID-19. Richard Schiff reveals he was hospitalized with the disease, adding before being admitted, it felt like he couldn't breathe. Now, more than three weeks after testing positive, he says he's still dealing with physical issues and is urging Americans to take the virus seriously. Schiff's wife, actress Sheila Kelly, who plays his wife on the show, also tested positive. We're, we're, just, we're not a good match. Disney Plus has released a new trailer for the upcoming docu-series On Point, which captures the experiences of students at the School of American Ballet in New York City. The series shows younger dancers preparing for George Balanchine's The Nutcracker and older ones getting ready to launch their careers. On Point debuts December 18th. Miss Lopez. Jennifer Lopez's new single is attracting attention, but not for the song itself. The cover for In the Morning, which JLo released on Twitter, shows a 51-year-old singer without clothing in a provocative pose. As expected, it's getting quite a buzz. In the Morning is due out today. And happy birthday to Bill Nye, the science guy, who turns 64. Actor Jaleel White, best known for his role as Steve Urkel on the TV show Family Matters, turns 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Romina Puga for ABC News. Lots Bill, unpacked Bill, with that one. Bill, Bill. Yeah, Bill you were talking the about the, uh, the J-Lo cover. She looks good. 50 years old. I don't know what she's doing, but. I'm going to leave it at that. Yep. All right. 456, <laughs> 68 degrees out. All right, do you have a job interview lined up and you really, really want this job? In our next half hour, our David Sears shares several tricks employer sometimes use to make sure you're the right candidate for the job.
And RJ Marquez joining us in studio, giving us some ideas on how you can spend your weekend full of holiday fun. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man dead this morning after being hit by a train. We have the latest from authorities on the scene. The CDC says the nation's death toll from COVID-19 could top 321. Thousand in the next three weeks, the latest on the coronavirus cases across the country and the race for a vaccine. Back here at home, though, taking a live look out there, 68 degrees to start your Black Friday. We're going to check in with Justin with your full forecast. Good morning, Friday, November 27th, the morning after Thanksgiving. If you are up and awake with us, thank you so much for joining us. 68 degrees, a little muggy. It's muggy and we feel full still. I, I ate at 12.30, I still feel full. Yeah, we, we do the Thanksgiving lunch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I made my parents mm. do it earlier. I forced my mom. I fell asleep though. You eat enough and what is it, Justin? The tryptophan? Tryptophan and the turkey. That'll yep. do it. So we're watching the uh, Cowboys play defense. Oh, oh no. shots fired. I'm sorry, that, that's got an end. <laughs> I'm gonna get emails and everything. No, it, it was just a rough game. <laughs> Okay, uh, outside right now, 68 degrees, as I mentioned. The humidity is at 90%. Calm winds. Dew point is at 65, so it is still very humid out there. We're waiting for a cold front to move through. It's going to enhance our rain chances a little bit more. We've already got some light rain out there at this hour. Temperatures today will get up probably into the low 70s before they start dropping during the afternoon. Behind the front, it will be a little bit breezy. You see the rain chances down there. They'll start off pretty high, taper off a little bit this afternoon, I think, as we see a little bit of a lull in the action. But don't worry, they'll pick back up again tonight into tomorrow. Let's take a look at the radar. It's becoming more active just as we speak. You see some of that moderate rain out there in Medina County that is working its way towards Bear County. So we'll see rain off and on through the morning time. If you do plan to be out and about this morning, uh, just know there's going to be some wet roads out there and Nick will have more on that here in just a second. A little closer look there at Bear County. You can see some of the light rain coming through. A little patch of moderate rain there up around Holotus. No lightning, but we could see some rumbles of thunder and there could be one or two strong storms today, especially south of San Antonio. 65 right now, Boulevardi, 70 in New Braunfels, 70 in Stenson, 70 in Hondo. Yes, it's still warm out there, and uh, we showed you what the conditions were like outside. Okay, let's check in on the roadways now. Uh, anything going on out there, Nick? Justin, right now, no. Things look good uh, right now. Hopefully, hopefully they stay this way. Now, it is wet out there. There's a lot of slick spots in the road, like Justin showed you, all that rain coming in. Please be careful. Be a defensive driver. Two hands on the steering wheel. Wear your seatbelt. We want everyone to get into work safely. All right, a lot of green on the screen. No construction. Good news there. Look at these drive times. 35 southbound from the southwest side of downtown to 1604. You got a 13-minute ride. And if you're 35 southbound, continuing from 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes looks really good there. All right, outside right now, Trans Guide 90 at Couples. Looks a little glimmerish on the road. Please be careful. 281 at 410 there near the airport. That looks good. Uh, no traffic there. And we'll do one more. 281 at the quarry looking good as well. So if you're going down 281, expect a smooth ride. M uh, Max here, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Now to the latest, BCSO telling us one man is dead after being hit by a train early this morning. Take a look. This was the scene just after midnight. This is the train tracks near Madonna, Lacoste, and Shepherd Road. This is the far southeast side. Bear County Sheriff's deputies on the scene telling us a man in his 30s was walking on the tracks with someone else. That's when he was hit by the train. Paramedics did arrive, but it was too late. That man in his 30s pronounced dead on the scene. San Antonio police tell us a man was shot while he was driving along I-35 near North New Braunfels Avenue, that's just northeast of downtown. Officers say the man told them that he felt a stinging sensation while he was driving. That's when he realized he had been shot close to his lower back. The victim was taken to the hospital. As far as the suspect, police say the man didn't see anyone, nor did anyone else in the area. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home. Local health officials reporting 1,032 new cases here in Bear County. As of Wednesday, the total number of cases since the pandemic hit us here, 76,750 cases. Six more people died, bringing the overall total to 1,343 people. Now the pandemic across the country and the race for a vaccine. AstraZeneca now says it will add a lower dose version of its vaccine to ongoing trials. That's right. The announcement comes as the CDC says the nation's death toll could top 321,000 people in the next three weeks. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details. 
This morning, hospitals sounding the alarm as ICUs reach record highs for the 17th day in a row. It's an overwhelming experience. It's an overwhelming problem. It's an overwhelming uh, disease. Nearly 90,000 Americans in hospitals across the nation almost double the number hospitalized at the beginning of the month. Mercy Hospital in Oklahoma giving us an inside look, packed hallways, and exhausted doctors and nurses. Back in April, we just had one hallway um, on the floor that had COVID patients. Uh, now we have four hallways worth of patients with COVID. One Texas county reporting for the fourth time this month that they have no available ICU beds. The staff there prioritizing COVID patients. Those non-pandemic related illnesses are now being sent to other areas. Cities now scrambling to get ahead of the next wave of cases, which are expected to spike in the wake of Thanksgiving. Officials in the St. Louis area are imposing new mask mandates. The move comes amid an unsuccessful campaign by health officials in the area to get Governor Mike Parson to require masks statewide. And now the holiday travel concern. Sunday is expected to be another busy travel day as people return home. More than a million expected at airports alone. TSA says it's ready to open as many lanes as needed to allow for social distancing. And if you look at national data, most passengers uh, waited less than eight or nine minutes if they were a standard passenger. But the crowd's adding to fears that the virus will spread even more. This addition of cases is not something that we can sustain. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. Time now, 506, 68 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the best tech deals for Black Friday. That's coming up in today's Tech Bites. And listen up, if you have a job interview coming up soon, we have three secret tricks that employers are going to use to make sure you are the right person for the job. Secret secrets are no fun. No, it's not a secret this morning. Mm. It may rain. Whoa. <laughs> it may rain. Breaking news this the morning. Big deal. We need this rain. Justin will let you know what our forecast looks like when we come back. With the new year right around the corner, now may be the time that many people are looking for a new career. That's right. With so many people unemployed, there are a lot of job applications in and about the country. And if you have a job interview set to start, well, you need to know what to do. David Sears explained several tricks employers sometimes use to make sure you're the right candidate for the job. When it comes to getting a new job, most of us have been through that dreaded job interview. It's a normal part of the process, but now employers are being more cautious than ever when it comes to hiring reliable employees. So if you have an interview soon, here's some tricks to keep in mind. Number one, the coffee trick. According to an article posted on considerable.com, during an interview, if you are asked and get a cup of coffee from the company's break room or kitchen, make sure to try to put it back and or offer to clean it. A lot of times this can be a test to see if you will be a responsible person. Employers feel if you can be attentive and thoughtful about small things, they can trust you with bigger things. Next, be aware of the drop the pin trick. Similar to the coffee trick, this is a test of your character. During the interview, the employer may accidentally, but quite on purpose, drop a pen on the floor. If the person picks it up quickly, they pass the test. The reasoning behind this, lots of people can put up a front and look charming, but it's what happens in unexpected moments that define a person's character. And finally, be aware of the receptionist test. Sometimes your interview begins as soon as you walk in the door. The receptionist can often be asked about your personality and how you treat every member of the staff can affect if you get the job or not. Some managers have even been known to pretend to be the receptionist for the purposes of getting to know you better. So always be aware of your attitude and extend your courtesy to every person you meet. Keeping these tricks in mind can not only improve your interviewing skills, they can also make you seem more friendly and help you stand out in your interview. David Sears, KZ12 News. Well, Black Friday shopping is not your thing. There's still a lot happening in and around San Antonio. A lot of stuff you can do this weekend. RJ Marquez joins us right here in the studio to break it all down. Good morning, RJ. Good morning, guys, uh, and happy day after Thanksgiving. It is so early. I don't know how you guys do this <laughs> every weekend. Uh, it's been a while since I've had to wake up this well, early. Well, we're happy but, you're here, Oh uh, Well, yeah, I definitely appreciate you guys having me. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. 
this weekend and as you are getting ready to celebrate the holiday with uh, friends or family. So check this out. We have some pretty interesting stuff. Starting tonight, we have the, uh, the Movies by the Moonlight at the, at the Botanical Garden. So the Botanical Garden is showing a family-friendly double feature of the Polar Express and Elf. Interesting conversation I once had about Elf. Uh, is that the best Will Ferrell movie? Yes. I, no, Justin I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, okay, I'm going to say one of those comedies, yeah, but some people say Elf. I say so. Talladega Nights yeah. or Anchorman. <laughs> I'm biased. Anchorman, there you go. Okay, so both of these films will be shown tonight and tomorrow between 5 and 10 p.m. Get this hot cocoa, s'mores, and movie inspired food and drinks will be available for purchase. Botanical Garden officials say guests are welcome to bring low riding lawn chairs and blankets. Adult tickets are 15 bucks and $10 for the kiddos. We have the link to buy tickets right now on ksat.com. All right, guys, moving on. The Christmas tree in Travis Park arrived last week, but tonight is the actual virtual lighting ceremony. This year's tree color is a con color fur from northern Michigan. If you guys know what that means, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we need like an arborist or something to figure this out. Um, it will be decorated, or it has been decorated, with more than 10,000 red, white, and blue lights. There will also be dozens of handmade decorations there. The tree lighting will be held at 7 p.m. to 7.20 p.m. tonight and will be followed by musical entertainment by Mariachi Las Altenas. Pretty good cool stuff there. All right, and finally, you can get your picture taken with Santa starting today at several locations around town. I know Max is very excited about this. So excited. Oh, yeah. Big Santa guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't a big Santa guy? All right, so starting today, Santa will be at Ingram Park Mall, North Star Mall, and Rolling Oaks Mall. You must have an appointment to get your picture with Santa at North Star and Rolling Oaks Malls. Walk-up appointments will only be available at Ingram Park Mall if all reservation time slots have not been filled. So just kind of keep that in mind. Santa will also be at dozens of other locations around town in December. To read more about these stories and more, just go to ksat.com. RJ Marquez, we'll yeah. check back in with you in a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Right. Sports. Ooh, I hear you guys talking. Oh, is there a game I hear yesterday? you guys talking a lot of smag about the Cowboys. I mean, I'm after not here to yesterday's defend them, but, game, you know, yeah. isn't it easy? I, yeah, it's... Yeah, they're Antonio they're Gibson hanging. three touchdowns. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check back in with you. Thanks, RJ. Thanks. 514, 68 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a preview of two music filled movies that will bring the beat to your holiday season. And Amazon announcing it is giving millions of dollars of holiday bonuses to its frontline workers. All the details next in today's Tech Bites. Out of all the high-tech gifts you can give, good health is the most important of all. Because with that, you have everything. This holiday season, give what matters to the ones who matter most. Do lotion and jeans go together? A Nivea breathable experiment. Now they do. Moisturizes deeply with no sticky feel. The game-changing Nivea breathable. It's judgment day. Backseat chefs peer inside your oven. But you've cleaned off all the baked on business for meals past with Easy Off. So the only thing they see is that beautiful bird. Go ahead, let them judge. In today's Tech Bites, Black Friday is officially here. Here are some of the best deals we've seen already on Amazon. $170 for Apple's AirPods Pro, and at Best Buy, $70 off iPads, and $400 off a 55-inch OLED Vizio television. Online shoppers are likely to set new records for snapping up Thanksgiving Day deals. Adobe is following online sales at 80 of the top 100 retailers, and says buyers are on track to break six billion in e-commerce sales. And finally, Amazon is giving $500 million in holiday bonuses to frontline workers. Full-time employees are getting a $300 bonus, while part-time workers will get $150. That's for anyone employed during the entire month of December this year. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day.
All right, so all morning we've been saying we're still full. I ate at like three yesterday. You said you ate at noon? Still full. Still full. All right, what was the number one food on the table? Mom's homemade mac and cheese. Oh, big win. All right, Officer Solis, what was your number one food? Uh, it's going to be the uh, the turkey tacos at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so. the, 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 third, the third plate. Yeah, those always hit really hard. Now I still, I still feel sleepy because of that. All right, <laughs> things are looking good right now. Green on the screen, no construction out there. You have a smooth ride if you are heading to work. Now, like Justin's going to tell you, rain's coming in. Roadways are slick right now, so please be careful. Let's look at 410 in Northwest Military. Traffic flowing good, uh, 90 and 36. That's looking good as well, but you can see the roadways are a little slick there. Please be careful. Two hands on the steering wheel, wear that seatbelt, and just get to work safely. All right, Justin, you're up. What was the number one food on the table? Oof. Uh, you don't have to go with the, uh, the the dressing or the stuffing, however you want to term it. Stuffing. Uh, yeah, mm. but it, it's always my favorite. You know, it's good. Stuffing's That's number fine. two. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, mac and cheese is good too. Listen, I mac like all cheese. of it. You know, people, this was kind of a point of controversy. Some people say mac and cheese doesn't belong on uh. the Thanksgiving table. I think those people are wrong. <laughs> David Sears spent all last week making that argument, and uh, I'm not buying it. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is a Thanksgiving staple too. Mac and cheese is amazing. Okay, radar. Uh, does show that we have some showers working through some moderate rain trying to work into Bear County, uh, Medina County around Hondo. We're seeing some light rain right now here in San Antonio's northwest side that is seeing some of that light rain. And then you've got some uh, showers down to Bevo and Victoria. Still no lightning strikes, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did get a few rumbles of thunder today. A little closer look here, west side of Bear County. Rain is beginning to move in and all of Medina County now within that light to moderate rain uh, down to the south. The heaviest of the rain is just uh, north and east of I-37 now between Pleasanton and Beeville. Outside at the airport, we are reporting a little bit of light rain, 68 degrees there. Winds are calm. Humidity is at 90 percent. There could be some patchy fog out there, too, with dew points as high as they are, 60s and 70s. This is still very spring like. Uh, it will change a little bit this afternoon. We'll get some drier air, some slightly drier air in here from the north behind our frontal boundary. But at the moment, it is so warm and sticky. Uh, temperatures 68 degrees at the airport, 61 curve. A little cooler as you get up towards junction. That front starting to have an influence there. 50, but 75 in Beeville. We'll zoom out some, and you can see the front is cooling things down out across West Texas. 50 in Midland, 31 right now in Amarillo. And it is that front, along with this upper level low, which sits off to our west, that is going to really enhance our rain chances tonight and into tomorrow. We're getting flow from the Pacific, so there's moisture there. You get flow from the Gulf of Mexico. Moisture on top of moisture. That's good news for us. And here's the forecast. Shows with the front around 10 o'clock, we could see some pretty decent rain, especially north and west of San Antonio. And then that transitions down to the south where uh, we could see some thunderstorms this afternoon. I do think we'll see a little bit of a break in the action this evening, this afternoon and this evening once this front moves through. But then the rain chances pick back up as we get into tomorrow morning. So 7 o'clock tomorrow, widespread showers and maybe a few storms. That continues through the noon hour. And then by 5 o'clock, we're starting to see the rain end west to east. We'll get clearing. And then by Sunday, we're looking at sunny skies. It'll be a little bit breezy, uh, but everything will clear out. We mentioned there is that marginal risk of some severe weather today. It's going to be south of San Antonio on a scale of 1 to 5. We're talking about a 1 here. If we see anything strong, it's probably going to be some hail, maybe some gusty winds, but that would be it. And then as far as rainfall goes, I'd say San Antonio on the order of a half an inch, maybe to uh, an inch, some places inch and a half. And then you'll go east of town, you'll find some places where two to three inches are possible. West of town, the amounts are going to be a little bit lower. But this is the most widespread rain we've had in a while. 60% chance of rain through the morning time. We'll taper those rain chances off a little bit later this afternoon. Temperatures topping out in the low 70s. And then an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Breezy, sunny on Sunday. And then 59 Monday. We have to point out Tuesday morning, a low of 31 here in San Antonio. So we could see our first freeze a little bit late this year, but Better late than never. Maybe even some hail this weekend. It's possible with some of the storms today there could be some small hail. I think generally south of San Antonio, though. Mm. All right. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 523, 68 degrees out. Well, a movie based on the hit stage musical The Prom is mm. coming up soon on Netflix. When you can enjoy it, that's next. Oh, my gosh. Check this out. It's all over Twitter. She wanted to take her girlfriend to the high school prom. And the PTA went a and they canceled it. We have got to go down there. Yes. Raise holy hell. Yes. We will be the biggest thing to happen in Indiana since 
whatever's happening in Indiana. Plenty of Broadway fans were thankful as Netflix dropped the first full trailer for The Prom. The star-studded movie based on the hit stage musical debuts December 11th. He heard things a particular way, and then he tried to manifest them in the world. Each show was like a composition. The new documentary Zappa, directed by Alex Winter, looks both at Frank Zappa's legendary musical career and his effect on the wider culture. I'm a child of the 70s, so I, I was first taken with Zappa, I would say, when I saw him on SNL, his uh, a big SNL appearance. He did a couple. Uh, and he was really, for I think for us growing up, he was as much a cultural icon as a musical icon. It's time for a revolution. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I'd never heard of any of that. Max, get with it. I guess so. I'm not, you know, politics and history. I, don't, I leave the entertainment to you. All right. 527, 68 degrees out. That's it's, a compliment. You're tuned in. I know. I'm, You're I'm, I'm cool. Oh, <laughs> well, God. Let's not take it All right. Far. Well, it's that... It is that time of year when many Americans are waiting for the stores to open to get all those Black Friday deals. Well, next on GMSA, how the pandemic is preventing some shoppers from hitting stores on Black Friday. And if you are already planning on sending holiday gifts to your loved ones by the mail, next on GMSA, the United States Postal Service shipping deadlines for the season. Good morning. It is Friday, November 27th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I just got really hungry. Did you just stuff a leftover Thanksgiving roll? Uh, what you, what I did what or did. didn't just do is okay. <laughs> it is like breakfast. <laughs> the rolls are out and about. We have the leftovers. Thanksgiving leftovers. People sleep on them. Good Thanksgiving I, leftover I have, sandwich. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about what we do at Nick Officer Solis talking about turkey tacos. Mm -hmm. Justin, what's your go-to leftover? You know, you take the roll and then you mm. put the turkey in the roll. You make mm. like a turkey... Thanksgiving sandwich leftover sandwich. Thing. With yeah. the stuffing yeah. and the mash in there. With the oh, everything. And potatoes. Mm. Yeah, you can mix yeah. it all together. That's the beauty of Thanksgiving. Just, you know, one giant beige thing. <laughs> <laughs> you eat it. Uh, okay, looking at the radar right now, we've got uh, showers working through San Antonio. This is all pretty light, but we're starting to see some wet roads out there, as Nick will tell you here in just a second. Seeing some more moderate rain around Uvalde and Medina County. Some showers around Beville and Victoria. There's going to be some heavier pockets here, but most of this is just uh, shower activity. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to uh, Bear County. And uh, you can see the light rain is uh, generally moving in here on the northwest side, but starting to see that spread all across town. And we'll continue to see this action, I think, over the next couple of hours as a frontal boundary moves in. And we may see some thunderstorms later this afternoon, generally south of San Antonio. Temperature wise, 68 degrees at the airport, 66 Randolph, 70 at Stinson. Still pretty warm out there, but we'll see temperatures come down some later today behind the front. 60% uh, chance for rain first half of the day. We'll taper that off a little bit this afternoon. The rain chances pick back up again tonight and into tomorrow. In fact, Saturday, probably our best chance of rain. We're going to time all that out for you coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick. It should be a quiet day, but there are some shoppers out there, I would imagine. Yeah, there might be some shoppers there, Justin, but if there are, it's okay. Traffic's still looking good, even though the roadways are a little bit uh, damp still. Traffic still looks good. A lot of green on the screen. Things are flowing smoothly. No construction. We're not going to have any construction for the rest of the morning, so it is good. Look at these drive times. 151 eastbound from 1604 to Highway 90 is 9 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to I-35, 12 minutes. Looking good there on 151 to 90. 281 and 410 still looks great right now by the airport. Things still flowing smoothly. And 281 at the quarry looking even better. Max, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, Texas health officials reporting an all-time high for daily COVID-19 cases. On Wednesday, more than 14,000 cases were reported, 1,032 of those cases right here in Bear County. The seven-day average of new cases in Texas continues to surpass 10,000. That's tripled since the beginning of October. More than 8,500 people are in the hospitals as of Wednesday. Testing is also at record levels. Roughly 10% of tests have been positive this week. And across the country, Johns Hopkins University reporting 110,611 new COVID cases. 1,232 people died on Thanksgiving. This morning, there are nearly 90,000 Americans in hospitals. Health officials are saying ICUs are reaching record highs. Forget this, the 17th day in a row. According to the CDC, the United States death toll could top 321,000 deaths over the next three weeks. 
In your morning headlines, the Postal Service is recommending you mail your holiday gifts earlier this year. The week of December 14th through the 21st is expected to be the busiest time for mailing, shipping and delivery. The USPS is also expanding Sunday deliveries in high package volume locations. Mail carriers will also be delivering priority mail express packages on Christmas Day for an additional fee. If you are sending first class mail, they recommend to ship by December 18th. Again, that deadline is December 18th and starting December 19th, it is recommended you use priority for your packages to arrive before Christmas. Now, one of the most popular companies during this pandemic saw a huge stock surge on Wednesday. Slack's stock shares went up following big news of a potential acquisition by Salesforce. So the workplace messaging tool Slack has been become more and more popular during this pandemic, large bigly because of the remote work during the pandemic. Now, Slack's stock price shot up as much as 28% Wednesday and its market cap grew to get this nearly $21 billion. Shares of Salesforce fell 4% on the news. Like Slack, Salesforce is a business software company that aims to improve efficiency and collaboration for a remote workforce. Neither company has made any public comment on the potential acquisition deal. It's Black Friday and a few county and city services will be closed today. City run COVID-19 testing sites are closed. However, the COVID-19 hotline is open. Head Start Pre-K SA and schools are closed. Central Library and Branch Libraries are closed, but recycling and garbage will be collected today and on street parking meters downtown. Mm. They are free for a full list of other closures and businesses open tomorrow. Head to our website ksat.com. And speaking of Black Friday, typically 24 frantic hours of shoppers waiting to get into stores and prowling for holiday gifts. But just like most things in 2020, the coronavirus playing a big factor today. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Black Friday has long been the Super Bowl of holiday shopping. I'm the crazy woman that sits out in front of Best Buy every year. I'm going to buy TV, a couple computers, I don't know. Whatever I think is a good deal. Despite the rising number of COVID-19 cases nationwide, many consumers are out and about looking for Black Friday bargains. These times they are very hard, so you need to try and maximize your dollar when you can. You know, uh, you don't know what the future holds. This Black Friday has undergone a pandemic-prompted makeover with mandatory masks and sanitizing stations at many retailers. At the uh, registers, we're taking the measures that only one person will pay. So it's not going to be too, too many people and we will maintain our social distancing. Some customers say they feel comfortable shopping in brick-and-mortar businesses. I feel so safe uh, using masks. The stores are doing a good job as well, keeping everybody safe. Retail analysts say Black Friday Friday's in-person popularity has dipped somewhat over the past few years, mainly because of online shopping. And that was before the coronavirus pandemic. There's a lot less people, and usually it's, you know, more a lot more people around us, and you're more claustrophobic, but this year is a lot more laid, that, laid back. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And roughly 51% of United States consumers say they feel anxious about in-store shopping this holiday season. All of this according to a recent survey by Deloitte. Well, today is also Black Fur Day. Savings at Animal Care Services are available you, with must-have mutts and fabulous felines. I see what you did there, producer. <laughs> Lighter colored pets can be adopted for just $25 for dogs and $15 for cats. Every Animal Care Services adopted pet comes with their sterilization, vaccination, deworming, and a lifetime registered microchip. Appointments can be made by logging into saacs.com. That info. Uh, info slash adopt. It's on your screen. So there you go. Based on availability for or of space in the kennels with appointment holders receiving priority, Animal Care Services Black Fur Day adoption event runs today from 1 p.m. Mm. to 7 p.m. And don't forget, tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. Now more than ever, local small businesses are looking for your support. Here's a look at some local businesses selling items unique to San Antonio. So SA Flavor has a Concha coin purse, Chica Verde with outdoor decor shopping where you can find things like plant-based knickknacks. To see more examples or links to their websites, just head to ksat.com. It's Concha? Concha, sorry. Yeah, and I have that purse. Do you? It's my favorite. There you go. All right, <laughs> shop small, people. 539, 68 degrees out.
Well, Thanksgiving is a day to eat good food and spend time with family. It's also mm. a great sports day, according to Officer Nick Solis. He's very oh, excited about it. Maybe this. not that great. Well, still ahead, RJ Marquez is coming back to give us all the sports highlights. And an easy and delicious recipe you can cook with the leftovers. We talked about it a little bit. We're going to go into it. Flautas. I think that's what Officer Nick was talking about. You were talking about turkey tacos. Turkey flautas. Tur turkey flautas. A little Ooh. spicy. Like that. All right, 539, 68 degrees. Will we see rain today and how much? Justin will let us know when we come back. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. And if you're not too full and have some turkey left over, I have a recipe for you this week. It is turkey flautas. For your ingredients, all you will need is some leftover turkey, make sure it's chopped up, some cheese shredded, corn tortillas, avocado oil, and an avocado if you want a side of guacamole. Next up, pour about a tablespoon of avocado oil into a skillet. You're gonna slightly cook the tortillas on each side. Once complete, you can pat them with some paper towels to get rid of some of the excess oil and then fill them with the turkey, cheese, anything you have basically you can fill with these. There are a few ways that you can cook these. You could either fry them in the pan, put them in the oven. I like to use an air fryer because it gets them done really quick and they're really crispy. The temperature on my air fryer is set at 390 and I usually make these for three to five minutes. Um, this batch right now is for four minutes and I have a great crisp on them. Every air fryer is different, so just kind of test yours out. And once you're done, serve your side of guacamole and you're ready to eat. Enjoy. Okay, pro tip. <laughs> I don't even cook, but I'm watching my mother and my mm -hmm. Diaz cook. A little bit of tomato sauce mm. with some spice in there. Ooh, kind yeah. of like what you're making enchiladas. She needed a little seasoning in there. A little bit. Our officer Nick still least had it. <laughs> He'll give us the, the pro tips coming up after the break. All right, 543, 68 degrees out. Go ahead and take it away, Max. All right, so if you're like Officer Solis, you may be a little disappointed over Thanksgiving. So if you miss the Cowboys lose pretty badly, RJ Marquez has the full highlights of all the Thanksgiving football games. Shout out to the Texans. We're not giving them enough credit. They destroyed the Lions. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Friday. I didn't write this line, but I'm very it's happy amazing. to say it. the Cowboys deep fried Ooh, on Thanksgiving. Let's look at that. Deep, deep fry. <laughs> and there are some big changes to tonight's big game coverage. Mm -hmm. RJ is back in studio. Mm -hmm. Loved it. You could say they were fried, roasted. Boiled, Anything you want. Smoked. Yes. Smoked. Look Ooh. at you. Ooh, very cool. <laughs> yeah, bringing out the puns. I thought you guys might like that. Deep fried. That's pretty much the first thing that came to my head because it's exactly what happened to the Cowboys yesterday. And uh, let's go ahead and check out these highlights here. Uh, Andy Dalton was back in the saddle for the Cowboys. And hey, you know what? Dallas looking good pretty on. Looking good early on. 54-yard touchdown there to Omari Cooper. Dallas up front early, 10-7. Then Alex Smith drives the uh, Washington football team down the field. Hey, Alex Smith just gives this guy the uh, Comeback Player of the Year award now because he has done uh, a remarkable job coming back from that really bad injury. All right, second half, Zeke. Doing what Zeke's been doing all year. What is going on here with Zeke Elliott and these fumbles? Uh, this was Zeke's fifth fumble that he's lost this season. Uh, he had five in his entire career, and that led to just a uh, landslide here by Washington. Uh, Antonio Gibson breaking fantasy hearts all over the place. He gets a touchdown, and then Montez Sweat uh, pretty much puts the Cowboys away, puts him to bed on Thanksgiving. There you go. Um, Right. Oh, man, I was about to say their uh, their old nickname. Uh, Washington goes up. <laughs> Washington goes up 41 to 16. They beat the Cowboys. Dallas falls to three and eight. And uh, this is the first sweep of Washington of Dallas uh, since 2012. 41 16 again. The final score there. The Cowboys really uh, tough loss there. They were still in contention for the NFC East crown. I guess technically they still are a little bit still in it, still in it. But uh, it's yeah, more of an this indictment pretty... on the division, though. <laughs> There you go, Max. Um, all right. Hey, some good news here. After not being able to win back-to-back -back games all season long, how about the Houston Texans? They have managed to do it in four days with their Thanksgiving Day route of the Lions in Detroit. 
First of all, why are the Lions even still playing on Thanksgiving? That's one of my biggest pet <laughs> peeves ever. The Lions, it's the worst game ever. Anyways, J.J. Watt gets things going here. Uh, early on, to, he gets a nice tip ball, interception return, 19-yard touchdown, and then just let this guy cook. Deshaun Watson, we're talking about Thanksgiving dinners. Th this guy was just cooking all over the place. Will Fuller there with a nice catch, touchdown. And then, you know what, just, uh, just throw it again to this guy, Will Fuller. Very nice there, yeah. Will Fuller, uh, two touchdowns for 171 yards on just six catches, and the Texans cruise 41-25. Nice win over the Detroit Lions. Uh, Houston improves to four and seven, still kind of out of the playoff race, but uh, good stuff there by the Texans. All right, guys, so switching gears a little bit, some news about tonight's high school football games. Check this out. Northside, Northeast ISD, and Alamo Heights school districts have all moved their kickoff times up by an hour due to the curfew in place in San Antonio and Bear County. Kickoff for those schools are now at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. So if we have a NISD game, an EISD game, Alamo Heights, those are all moved up early. Uh, you can check out the full schedule on our website, ksat.com. We have all those changes there. And uh, again, the uh, mayor, the judge, obviously don't want people congregating after games. They want them to get home safe. And uh, again, we do have that curfew in place. So. High school. I was watching the world. high school highlights. They already look better than the Lions. <laughs> Even the Cowboys. Ooh. Lions and Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Good shot there, Max. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you so hey, much, Hey, these RJ. high school kids can ball here for sure. That's true. All right. We'll Thank check you, back RJ. in with you in a little bit. So, Officer Solis, it looked like you were starting to tear up when we saw the Cowboys. I like that, that they, the first shot we showed, mm -hmm. you were like, yeah. Uh, and then you were like, It started oh. off so promising. RJ threw some salt in the wound there. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. But I did have Deshaun Watson on Fantasy, so. Not Big one. Today. All right, here we go. A lot of green on the screen here. Not much going on uh, traffic-wise. Just get, get to work safely. Roadways are a little slick, like Justin's going to tell you here right now. 35 at Pine, looking good and flowing smoothly. 410 at Babcock. Look at that, Justin. Those roadways are slick. So, please, two hands on the steering wheel and wear that seatbelt. Oh, it's not just Officer Solis, not just Sarah, it's not just RJ. Justin, you also had some comments and questions about the Cowboys. Mm, yes. Lots of, uh, lots of concerns, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, uh, it wasn't pretty at all. I'm good. Okay, we'll keep that behind the scenes then. Yeah. We'll save that for later. I, I think we've, we've done enough for uh, to talking about the Cowboys. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I do <laughs> notice there's an L behind you, though. Uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there. Okay, uh, there is a frontal battery out there connected to the L, low pressure. Uh, we've got uh, some showers and storms out ahead of it. Some thunderstorms are possible today, although we haven't seen much of that yet. I think we could see some rumbles of thunder. Uh, right now, we've got some showers working through San Antonio and through Bear County, especially across the northern half of the county. I just stepped outside. There is some light rain here at the station, so that's kind of the scene I think we're going to be seeing over the next uh, several hours. Uvalde, Hondo, you're seeing some of that rain, too couple showers developing up there around San Marcos and then we're starting to get some heavier rain down to the south and I'll show you that in just a second but let's zoom in here on San Antonio moderate rain I'd say stretching from Highway 90 to the north uh, especially if you're on the northwest side you're seeing rain at this hour then I mentioned some of those heavier showers and we actually have seen a couple of lightning strikes mixed in here and there with this activity from Goliad to Quero Howitzville you've seen a little bit of a shower uh, down to Victoria uh, so it's good to see that the radar is active. It's been so long since we've been able to use the radar, and we'll be using extens it uh, extensively over the next couple of days. 68 degrees right now, calm winds. Humidity is way up there. Dew points are in the 60s and 70s. That's pretty sticky air. And so that's going to set the stage for that rain today as this frontal boundary starts to shift south. Right now, it's starting to move into the hill country. Behind it, temperatures are in the 50s. And this will be sort of a slow thing today, slow movement. Uh, works way towards uh, San Antonio probably by midday and then eventually work its way uh, through the rest of the area by tonight. Behind it, there is some cooler air. It's going to be a gradual thing, though. The, the air will slowly uh, cool down some as we get later into this afternoon and this evening. And we've got our upper level low back off to the west. This is giving us the lift we need, and this moves through tomorrow. So that's why our rain chances actually peak on Saturday. And we're going to get some good moisture, deep moisture coming in from the Pacific. We got moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, so all of our ingredients are there. Here's how it plays out with our uh, forecast. And you see showers and storms. This is around 10 o'clock this morning, right along the front. As this moves south, we'll see the rain chance sort of shift south as well. So I think there's a bit of a lull in the action this afternoon and this evening. But as we get into tomorrow morning, rain picks back up as that upper, lo upper level low moves in. And then tomorrow we'll get pretty widespread rain. It'll start to end west to east by tomorrow afternoon. And then the clouds will clear out after that. And we'll get uh, clear skies 
on Sunday. Rainfall wise, I'd say about a half an inch to an inch here in San Antonio. Some places make it up to an inch and a half and then you'll see some bigger totals off to the east, lesser totals off to the west as it usually uh, plays out that way with these uh, sort of systems. And our forecast for today, 60% chance of rain through the morning time. We'll see those uh, rain chances taper off a little bit uh, this afternoon. And then tomorrow, 80% chance of rain. It'll be cool, cloudy, breezy, 58 on your Saturday, 65 Sunday. And then some chilly temperatures next week with the possibility of a freeze Tuesday morning. We'll be right back. Now it's your turn. Go be a hero, Miles. Suit up as the web slinger in Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales. It's a game that is a continuation of the first one that released in 2018, where we saw the um, adventures of Peter Parker eight years into his tenure as Spider-Man, and a new Spider-Man uh, started, uh, you know, perking up, and that was Miles Morales. Thank you. You're welcome. This game takes place one year after those events, and this is going to be Miles' journey to discover what it means to be a hero on his own. An unlockable spider suit Miles can wear is from the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, complete with the film's frame rate. Some of the things we really loved about Into the Spider-Verse was that on twos frame skip aesthetic that you'd see as, as Miles is swinging and doing combat, which gives it that hand-drawn feel. So our tech artists were able to replicate that aesthetic. Whenever you say Spider-Man, you always mean the other one. You're Spider-Man. You can fix this your way. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, we are just getting started this morning. Still ahead on GMSA at 6 a.m. Waistbands might be getting tighter and stress levels higher, but that doesn't mean that your healthy habits have to slide off track. We have some easy ways to keep your mental and physical health in tip-top shape for this coming season. Right now on GMSA at 6 a.m., a man hit and killed by a train overnight. The latest from BCSO on the scene. Plus, the COVID curfew in San Antonio has impacted more than just restaurants and bars. Just ahead, what high school football fans need to know about tonight's game. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 67 degrees to start your Black Friday. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving. Thankful to be here with you guys. You still full? Oh my gosh. I just feel like the food was like here mm. yesterday and now it's like slowly like here. It's taken a while. That's fair. Spoiler <laughs> alert, already dove into some of the leftovers. Max was full on eating leftovers in between the break. You know, we've been talking about this. What is the go to? Are we going to weather or traffic? Weather. Oh, we got weather. All right, just making sure. I started looking over and I was like, I don't want to throw it to Solis if no, no, we have Justin. So, you're what good. is your go to uh, Thanksgiving leftover? You know, it's to me, honestly, it's all good. And I know everyone says that, but I like all of it. You used to like, mix it all together on mm. one plate and. Cold, right? Big sandwich. Uh, well, uh, you a, heat it a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but you can't overheat it, you know. <laughs> that's not, no. I like it cold. One big sandwich, cold. though. Yeah, like just, of course. Like a mush pile. Yeah. Like I said, one big plate <laughs> of like beige, that. and then you're good to go. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got rain out there tonight, uh, this morning, I should say. Uh, and it's, it's going to be fairly widespread this morning. So if you have plans to be out and about, it's going to be a little bit wet. Maybe it's a good day to stay inside and just eat some leftovers because uh, it will be damp, at least for the first half of the day. I think rain chances will taper off a little bit this afternoon. Doppler radar shows we've got showers working through. Moving off to the north and east, uh, some rain around uh, Bear County uh, towards Medina and Uvalde County. A little closer look here at San Antonio. Most of the moderate rain now is on the north side, but even if you're watching us from uh, south of 410 there, there are still some light sprinkles and some showers, and you'll get some rain. Everybody's going to get in on this, I think, which is great news. And uh, you look off to the east, starting to see some lightning strikes here. So this is a little bit heavier rain stretching from Howitzville to Cuero to Victoria. That's going to work its way towards Houston. And uh, looking at temperatures, still warm. We're in the upper 60s right now, and temperatures will be right there, uh, right around 70, I think, through about midday. And then they'll start to fall off a little bit behind a cold front that's going to move through. So that enhances our rain chances some. Again, first half of the day, best rain chances. They come down a little bit by 4 o'clock, 40% chance. And then tonight, 
we bump those rain chances back up and especially tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a cloudy, damp, cool day. We'll have more on your Saturday forecast and Sunday forecast too coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Nick. And I'm guessing things are pretty quiet. Maybe yep. they'll change. Well, no, Justin, I guess roadways starting to get more wet, so we have vehicles hydroplaning now. Okay. So roadways definitely getting a little bit more dangerous out there. If you're headed to work, please be careful. Two hands on the steering wheel. Wear that seatbelt. Oh, we have our first accident in the morning here. It's going to be northbound US Highway 281 at Josephine Road. Now, this is the entrance ramp from Josephine onto northbound 281, where a one vehicle hydroplane there on the uh, highway. Please be careful. Roads are dangerous. Uh, SAPD is on scene. Got some trans guide footage of this one here. And this is 281 at the quarry, uh, but it's it's a little bit more south of there. 281 at River Road, right there between Josephine and River. A um, little bit dangerous, so like I said, be careful. It's wet out there. Drive safe. Max, Sarah, back to you. Officer Solis, well, new this morning, BCSO tells us one man is dead after being hit by a train overnight. According to the deputies, it happened just after midnight on the train tracks near Madonna Lacoste and Shepherd Road. That's on the far southeast side. BCSO tells us a man was walking on the tracks with someone else when he was hit by the train. Paramedics did arrive, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Now to the latest on the coronavirus here in San Antonio. Last night was the first night of the Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf and Mayor Ron Nirenberg, Nirenberg's Thanksgiving weekend curfew. The curfew goes from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., so it's been lifted as of now this morning. People will not be allowed to gather outside of their household during the curfew hours, except for when seeking services from a business. Restaurants will be closed to Dine in services at 10 p.m. However, curbside drive through and takeout services can still run. Individuals and businesses who violate the curfew could face up to a thousand dollar fine. The curfew ends on Monday. And here's the thing. Restaurants are not the only businesses taking a hit this weekend because of the curfew. Local bar owner now fears the temporary countywide curfew could lead to permanent problems. Don Marsh is the owner of Bar 1919. It's in Southtown, just off South Alamo. Marsh tells us that this holiday weekend is crucial for their industry. Although he says business is improving since the pandemic hit, he was hoping for another boost over this holiday weekend. But now with this temporary curfew in place, he is unsure of what to expect. Thanksgiving night, Black Friday, the weekend, everybody's off. I mean, these are easy money days for the bar business. And now it's been, again, taken away from us. And remember, this temporary curfew announced Wednesday after a huge surge in local COVID cases. On our website right now, Bear County officials have answered some questions about the curfew this weekend, like what to do if you work past 10 p.m. and more. To read those answers, head to our homepage at ksat.com. And speaking of the curfew, big news on the local high school football front, Northside ISD joining Northeast and Alamo Heights ISD, moving up their kickoff times an hour for high school football games set for tonight. These three districts made the time changes after the announcement of the curfew. Mayor Ron Nuremberg did tell us, though, fans are not allowed to congregate after the games, but he didn't say they needed to make any changes. He said theirs are not mandatory, but these three districts did decide it would be better to make the time change. The Bernie ISD Athletics Department has confirmed with us that their playoff game set for tonight will go on as scheduled at 7.30. All right, from President Donald Trump being asked to pardon the founder of WikiLeaks to details on when you need to ship your holiday gifts. A lot has happened this week. Joining us once again this morning is RJ Marquez in the newsroom. Good morning, RJ. And what are some of those headlines? Yeah, good morning, guys. We begin with President Donald Trump saying he'll leave the White House if the Electoral College seats President-elect Joe Biden. Interesting. Even as he has insisted such a decision would be a mistake, President Donald Trump spent his Thanksgiving renewing claims that massive fraud and crooked officials in battleground states caused his election defeat, even though there has been no evidence to support his claims. The act of President Trump having addressed whether or not he would leave office after losing re-election has underscored the extent to which he has criticized Democratic conventions over the last three weeks. On a related note, uh, Julian Assange's partner, Stella Morris, tweeted President Trump on Thanksgiving yesterday, appealing to him to pardon the WikiLeaks founder. Morris posted a photo of their two young children on Twitter on Thursday and wrote, these are Julian's sons, Max and Gabriel. They need their father. Our family needs to be whole again. She added, I beg you, 
please bring him home for Christmas. Assange remains in a British prison cell as he awaits a judge's decision about whether he can be sent to the U.S. to face espionage charges. The Trump administration has given TikTok until December 4th to find a U.S. buyer. The app's Chinese owner, ByteDance, is trying to finalize a takeover deal by Oracle and Walmart. The deadline for selling TikTok, which is an app for short-form videos, has been extended twice in the past month. In an executive order this summer, President Trump originally set a hard deadline of November 12th for the change in ownership. He called the Chinese-owned social media video sharing app a threat to our national security. All right, guys, switching gears a little bit, some important dates to know here. The Postal Service is reminding you to mail your holiday gifts early. The week of December 14th to the 21st is expected to be the peak for this year's busiest time for mailing, shipping, and delivery. With more online shopping expected than ever before, the USPS is expanding Sunday deliveries in high package volume locations. Mail carriers will also be delivering priority mail express packages on Christmas Day for an additional fee. If you are sending first class mail the recommended deadline is to ship to ship is by December 18th and starting December 19th it is recommended you use priority mail to make sure your packages arrive before Christmas and finally Hulu is offering a killer sale for Black Friday access to its ad supported streaming TV service is just going to be a dollar and ninety nine of one dollar and ninety nine cents a month so basically two dollars there the discount price is good for a full year and then it reverts to its usual price of five ninety nine a month so basically six dollars if you are already a Hulu subscriber you can still save as the deal applies to both new and eligible returning subscribers also anyone who has signed up in the last three months can take advantage of the Black Friday sale but the deal is a limited time offer it's available at Hulu.com only through the end of Monday, November 30th. Uh, and I'm interested in this because I have Hulu, but I have the package that includes Disney Plus mm -hmm. and also ESPN Plus because, you know, I got to see the Texas State Bobcats somehow. That's the only way, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way, that's the only way they're, on, uh, they're on any sort of TV or streaming. So I'll be interested to see if that price drops a little bit. All right. Thank you so much, RJ. That's a huge discount. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 610, 67 degrees out. Preparing to head back home after the Thanksgiving holiday. Still ahead on GMSA, what you can expect at the airport if you are flying this weekend. Plus, important news if you have a job interview coming up. Three top secret tricks employers are going to use to make sure you are the right person to hire. Take a look outside. 67 degrees, 7-Eleven looking a little muggy out there. Is rain falling in your area? How long will this rain last? Justin will let us know when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. If you are looking to switch up your life, the new year is right around the corner. But keep in mind that your job interview may start before you even know it. Our David Sears explains several tricks employers sometimes use to make sure you're the right candidate for that job. When it comes to getting a new job, most of us have been through that dreaded job interview. It's a normal part of the process, but now employers are being more cautious than ever when it comes to hiring reliable employees. So if you have an interview soon, here's some tricks to keep in mind. Number one, the coffee trick. According to an article posted on considerable.com, during an interview, if you are asked and get a cup of coffee from the company's break room or kitchen, make sure to try to put it back and or offer to clean it. A lot of times this can be a test to see if you will be a responsible person. Employers feel if you can be attentive and thoughtful about small things, they can trust you with bigger things. Next, be aware of the drop the pin trick, similar to the coffee trick. This is a test of your character. During the interview, the employer may accidentally, but quite on purpose, drop a pen on the floor. If the person picks it up quickly, they pass the test. The reasoning behind this, lots of people can put up a front and look charming, but it's what happens in unexpected moments that define a person's character. And finally, be aware of the receptionist test. Sometimes your interview begins as soon as you walk in the door. The receptionist can often be asked about your personality and how you treat every member of the staff can affect if you get the job or not. Some managers have even been known to pretend to be the receptionist for the purposes of getting to know you better. So always be aware of your attitude and extend your courtesy to every person you meet. Keeping these tricks in mind can not only improve your interviewing skills, they can also make you seem more friendly and help you stand out in your interview. David Sears, KZ12 News.
You should be nice to everyone. Yes, yeah, someone who's nice to everyone, Officer Nick Solis. Which is very true. Is the traffic playing nice, Officer Nick? Sarah, right now, no. We have this accident here. This is going to be a 281 northbound at the SA River. We got one lane blocked off there, but look, look at the reflection there. It is really wet outside right now. You got to be careful if you're driving to work. Uh, two hands on the steering wheel, wear that seatbelt, getting a little dangerous out there on the roadways. But this is the only accident we're dealing with right now. Like I said, this is northbound 281 as you exit Josephine. It's the on, I'm sorry, the on ramp from Josephine in between the uh, River Road and Josephine there. This is where the accident is on 281 and SA River. All right, Officer Solis, thank you so much. Wet, wet roadways out there. Are we going to see uh, some rain throughout the day, Justin? Yeah, there's a pretty decent chance. And I, we should also mention that it's when it first rains like that, when it's light and it hasn't rained in a while, you get some of that oil from the road and the roads do get really slick. So as Nick mentioned, be careful out there. Uh, the rain's going to be possible through the morning time. We'll still see some chances this afternoon, although I think the rain uh, threat shifts south a little bit. Let's start with the radar. We'll show you where uh, the rain is right now. Uh, getting light rain generally here across San Antonio, although we're picking up on some more moderate rain just to the northwest up there around Medina Lake. And then you'll run into some thunderstorms as you get out here near Victoria and off to the east run. Howitzville, seeing some pretty decent rain there. And uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer uh, to uh, Bear County here. And uh, you can see the lanes, the rain's generally pretty light. Uh, we may see more moderate rain get up towards uh, Lake Hills, as we mentioned. There was a nice little cell here just northeast of Bernie, but that is weakened just a little bit as it's also working off to the uh, north and west. We can put this in motion there. You can see some of the rain coming through. Popped up right there, but sort of fell apart. But I think we could see some more of that. Some of these cells sort of popping up. There could be some thunder with some of this activity as a cold front gets a little bit closer to us a little bit later this morning. So it is going to be an active day, and then rain chances will pick up again tonight into tomorrow. Here's a live look outside. A little bit of rain coming down at the airport. 67 degrees. Temperatures in the upper 60s at Stinson and Kelly. Randolph as well with a southeasterly wind still at about 11 miles per hour. Once that front moves through, we'll get more of a northeasterly wind later today. 68 degrees in Bolverde, 64 Bernie State, 61 right now in Kerrville. 70 is down to the south, Pleasanton and Kennedy. And notice the temperature there in Junction, 53. Front is through there, and the front is going to be a slow mover today, but it will work its way through the area, eventually making it to the coast a little bit later this afternoon. Numbers aren't bitterly cold behind the front, but it is colder, and we'll see some of that cooler air coming in tonight and uh, into tomorrow. On top of the front, we have an upper level low, which is sitting out over Arizona. This is pumping in some Pacific moisture. So we've got all the ingredients we really need. And as this upper level low gets closer to us tonight and tomorrow, that will also enhance our rain chances. So the computer models do show decent rain through 10 o'clock. Then as we get towards, say, 4 p.m., notice it tapers off a little bit. There'll still be some showers around, but the better chance of rain is going to be down to the south along the front. But as we get the upper level energy coming in tonight into tomorrow morning, rain starts to increase around the area again. And I think tomorrow has potential to be basically a damp, cool, cloudy day. By noontime, still seeing some rain. And then by 5 o'clock, we should start seeing into that rain. Clouds will clear out. We'll see sunny skies on Sunday. Uh, there is a marginal risk of some strong storms today. It's low end. If we see any strong storms, there could be some small hail mixed in with that. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then as, as far as rainfall goes, about half an inch to an inch here in San Antonio, maybe some uh, better amounts as you go east, up to two to three inches in some cases across our eastern counties, and then a little bit less as you go west, maybe around a half an inch. But we'll take anything we can get at this point. Uh, forecast for today, 60% chance of rain through 9 a.m. Temperatures will top out close to 70. And again, we'll see those rain chances taper off a little bit later today, but pick back up tonight, 80% chance tomorrow. Breezy, 58, that's it. And then 65 Sunday, 59 Monday, one of our cooler days. And then Tuesday morning, we're down to 31, guys. So potential freeze here in San Antonio. And then another chance for rain on Wednesday. From 74 to 31. It's going to be chilly next week. It's going to feel a lot more like fall, for sure. All right, Justin, yep. thank you so much. Time now, 620, 67 degrees out. Well, after the break, millions of people are heading home after Thanksgiving, despite those strong warnings from the CDC to stay home and not travel. We'll have the details in this morning's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
If your dry eye symptoms keep coming back, inflammation in your eye might be to blame. Looks like a great day for achy, burning eyes. Over-the-counter eye drops typically work by lubricating your eyes and may provide temporary relief. Ha! These drops probably won't touch me. Zydra works differently, targeting inflammation that can cause dry eye disease. What is that? Zydra? No! It can provide lasting relief. Oh. Zydra is the only FDA-approved treatment specifically for the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. One drop in each eye, twice a day. Don't use if you're allergic to Zydra. Common side effects include eye irritation, discomfort, or blurred vision when applied to the eye, and unusual taste sensation. Don't touch container tip to your eye or any surface. After using Zydra, wait 15 minutes before reinserting contacts. Got any room in your eye? Talk to an eye doctor about twice daily Zydra. I prefer you did it. Zydra, not today, dry eye. Kids. And this morning's GMA First Look, preparing for this Sunday's travel crush. For weeks, public health officials warned not to travel, but more than 6 million people still flew, tens of millions more on the roads. Sunday, expect another busy travel day as people return home. More than a million expected at airports alone. TSA says it's ready to open as many lanes as needed to allow for social distancing. And if you look at national data, most passengers uh, waited less than eight or nine minutes if they were a standard passenger. And then if you're a pre-check passenger, you're going to wait on the order of two or three minutes. And coming up at 7 a.m., for those of you who've chosen shopping over travel, we've got you covered, too, with all the best Black Friday deals to help you save big. I'm done Christmas shopping. I did it all online with pickup like this. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. I love that woman. The, I know. The part that they didn't have in there, she goes, it's tremendous. She is just so happy. <laughs> All right, so chances are you still have a lot of leftovers from Thanksgiving. If you're like me, you might have already started eating them, but you can reheat them and make sandwiches out of all of it, but that is not all. Max seriously is eating leftovers in the break. Well, this morning, our Erica Hernandez shows us creative ways to put those scraps to use. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. And if you're not too full and have some turkey left over, I have a recipe for you this week. It is turkey flautas. For your ingredients, all you will need is some leftover turkey, make sure it's chopped up, some cheese shredded, corn tortillas, avocado oil, and an avocado if you want a side of guacamole. Next up, pour about a tablespoon of avocado oil into a skillet. You're gonna slightly cook the tortillas on each side. Once complete, you can pat them with some paper towels to get rid of some of the excess oil and then fill them with the turkey, cheese, anything you have basically you can fill with these. There are a few ways that you can cook these. You could either fry them in the pan, put them in the oven. I like to use an air fryer because it gets them done really quick and they're really crispy. The temperature on my air fryer is set at 390 and I usually make these for three to five minutes. Um, this batch right now is for four minutes and I have a great crisp on them. Every air fryer is different, so just kind of test yours out. And once you're done, serve your side of guacamole and you're ready to eat. Enjoy. Any comments, questions, concerns? You know, maybe some spice. Mm. Spice to the meat. There you go. All right, time now, 627, <laughs> 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a COVID-19 vaccine company announced there was an error Ooh. in its effectiveness results. How, after the break, how it says the mix-up happened. On this Black Friday, some troubling signs for the U.S. economy. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The latest on the pandemic's impact coming up. Plus, it's Black Friday, so you know what that means. There are deals everywhere. Just ahead on GMSA, I'll tell you where you can find some unique gifts right here in the Alamo City. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is 67 degrees to start your Friday morning. As RJ was telling us, it is Black Friday, so if you are out and about today looking for those deals, can you expect rain? We're going to check in with Justin in just a few moments. Good morning. It is Friday, November 27th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I feel full still. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to hit the leftovers. I already have. But anyway, we did see some wet roadways out there. Yes, and we really need that rain, Justin. 
I'm loving it. I'm loving that we get to use the radar this morning. This thing's been turned off for like two months. Uh, it's great. We've got widespread rain now on the radar and it's affecting places like San Antonio. We're seeing some light rain. None of it's been very heavy, but we'll see the light rain off and on through, I'd say at least the, the lunch hour. Uh, right now, we've got some moderate rain stretching from Medina County up into northwestern Bear County. We've got some heavier thunderstorms out around Victoria, and we've had a pretty steady rain from Del Rio Eagle Pass over to U Valley through most of the morning. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio. You can see the light rains here and there. Uh, it's trying to work into the western part of the county. So uh, showers likely again through about noontime. Then we'll see rain chances taper off a little bit as we get into the afternoon. Some thunderstorms along Highway 77 between Victoria and Howitzville this morning. Some light rain around Carn City. And temperature wise, it's still pretty warm in the 60s and 70s. A lot of humidity out there, too. It's going to be like that until our front moves through. And that will be a, sort of a slow process here. But I think we get up to about 70. And then the temperatures will start to fall off a little bit later today. We'll keep rain chances at 60% through 9 a.m. Drop them off a little bit and then they pick back up tonight. Saturday looks like a wet day. We're going to see rain chances hang around through most of the day on Saturday and then things look better on Sunday. We'll get into that weekend forecast here in just a little bit, but I know we're starting to see some issues on the roadways because they are now wet with that light rain coming down. Nick, how are things looking now? We got another accident, Justin. Definitely starting to get a lot da more dangerous out there. So if you are headed to work, please be careful. Roadways are slick right now. Uh, use that seatbelt, please. Okay. Uh, have an accident here northbound IH 35 South at Nagalito. So you could just say 35 South at US 90 there looks like a vehicle rolled over. So the wet roads affecting um, the, the these accidents, you know, it, it's, it's happening right now. So please be careful out there. This accident northbound US Highway 281 at Josephine is now cleared up. So that's good news. And uh, let's just take a look outside so we can look at these roadways. 410 at Babcock looks very slick there. 410 at Calabro, you can see the reflection from the water through the headlights there and we'll do one more 410 at Northwest Military traffic flowing smoothly, but still looks very dangerous out there. Be careful. Max Sarah back to you. Thank you, Nick. We begin this half hour at the latest on COVID-19 spreading across the United States. Numbers show there were over 100,000 new cases yesterday alone. Let's take a look. According to Johns Hopkins University, 110,611 new cases of COVID-19 on Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, another 1,232 people died because of COVID-19. Well, AstraZeneca announced this week that its experimental coronavirus vaccine is 70% effective on average, but there is a, a lack of clarity surrounding the data and it's raising some eyebrows. The drug maker who developed the vaccine with the University of Oxford clarified that two different dosing regimens were used. One group received a half dose of the vaccine and then a full dose at least a month later, resulting in a 90% effectiveness on average. The other group received a full dose followed by another full dose at least a month later, resulting in only 62% effectiveness. The company says the smaller dose, which was 90% effective, was the result of lab error. And speaking of a vaccine, President Donald Trump says distribution of a vaccine could start as early as next week. We are rounding the curve. The vaccines are being delivered literally. It'll start next week and the week after. And it'll hit the frontline workers and seniors and uh, doctors, nurses, a lot of people are going to start and we're going very quickly. Two companies already announced a third one coming up and a fourth and fifth one coming up soon also. We are rounding the curve. The and as the president is saying right now that two companies did announce several other vaccines are coming up. Well, on this Black Friday, there are some troubling signs for the economic recovery, even as online retail sales are projected to surge. That's right. ABC Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. Good morning. Millions of Americans are in desperate need this holiday season as the pandemic continues to put unprecedented strain on the U.S. economy. As COVID cases spike nationwide and the daily death toll remains near record highs, the economic toll of the virus is also mounting. The latest report from the Labor Department showing another 778,000 Americans filed new unemployment claims last week, with more than 20 million people now collecting some form of jobless benefits. For me and my family, it's been, it's been tough. An estimated 50 million people are now facing food insecurity, up 43 percent since before the pandemic. Happy Thanksgiving! On Thanksgiving, Americans waiting hours in line for food. I have nothing at home. Seriously, nothing. So this is a huge help today. It sure is. 
Economic stimulus programs that have provided lifelines for millions of Americans are set to run dry at the end of the year. With no economic relief in sight and COVID cases surging again, recent retail sales and consumer spending data raising alarms the recovery is stalling. And yet the nation's economic disparities on full display as the stock market surges. While many stores close their doors for in-person shopping amid the pandemic, Online retail sales are expected to increase between 20 to 30 percent this holiday season, topping $218 billion. President-elect Joe Biden is expected to announce key members of his economic team next week. Among his picks is former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen, who'd be the first woman to be Treasury Secretary. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington is the day after Thanksgiving. Most people know that to be Black Friday. It's when you can get some of the best deals of the year. There's not only sales on a national scale, but also local as well. And joining us in studio to tell us what shoppers can expect is RJ Marquez. Good morning, RJ. Good to have you on our show. Yeah, good to be here, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, so there's a lot happening today, but one of the biggest things people need to know first as they get their day started is a few county and city services will be closed today. City-run COVID-19 testing sites are closed. However, the COVID-19 hotline is open. Head Start, Pre-K for SA, and schools are closed, of course. Central Library and Branch Libraries are all closed as well. Meanwhile, some services that will resume today include trash pickup, recycling, and garbage will still be collected as normal today. You should also note that the, uh, that the on-street parking meters in downtown will be free, so good stuff there. So let's talk about those sales. Yes, Black Friday. According to the National Retail Federation, there's more than 40% of shoppers saying that they started making their holiday purchases earlier than usual this year. The pandemic made online shopping popular. 60 major retailers are offering curbside pickup. That's always nice. Look out for deals on electronics like the Beats wireless noise canceling headphones. You can find them for up to 50% off. That's a really good deal there. So if the Beats aren't your vibe, then there are discounts on apparel and accessories. Uh, they range from more than 50% off at JCPenney, Macy's, and Kohl's. Get that Kohl's cash, Max. Uh, for those who don't want to lose the in-person shopping experience, many stores are adding extra safety measures and encouraging social distancing. So good stuff there. All right, back here at home. If you do plan to head out to the stores today, know that hours may be different than usual. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a full list of everything you need to know when it comes to Black Friday shopping. And don't forget that after Black Friday is Small Business Saturday, and more than ever, local businesses are looking for your support and money. Here's a look at some local businesses selling items unique to San Antonio right now. For example, SA Flavor has a Concha Coin purse. Sarah, you said you have this, right? I have this. <laughs> <laughs> that thing would just make me hungry all the time. <laughs> um, or Chica Verde with Outdoor Decor Shop, where you can find things like plant-based knickknacks. What would be a plant-based knickknack? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I guess people are going to have to find out. Okay, so to see more examples, here you go, Max, or links to their websites, just head to ksat.com. All right, thank you so much, RJ Marquez. Always a pleasure. 640, 67 degrees out. While keeping up with your health after the break, we're looking into some health habits to start during a particularly challenging time of the year. Harvard Medical School released a set of guidelines to help us keep healthy habits during a particularly challenging time of year. Dr. Beth Frades at Harvard says we should go in with moderation in mind. That does not mean we should not allow ourselves to indulge a little, but we should just set limits. For example, set a limit on alcoholic drinks and be sure to drink more water. She also advises not to put a pause on workouts. Dr. Frady says workout schedules are usually the first thing to go as people get busier, but it is exactly what not to do. She also says to try new activities to shake things up. Generally, people are more likely to keep up with a workout if they feel stimulated and interested in it. She also says it's not a bad idea to ask for exercise themed gifts for Christmas, especially if you're looking to commit to the exercise down the road. It can also be helpful to track your habits. That means writing down what you eat and drink, tracking your activity and monitor your daily progress. It can help you notice when your habits are starting to slide and when you need to jump back in. Dr. Freddy says we need to change our focus as well. The holiday season is a wonderful time to build connections with friends and family. She says we should look to fill our hearts with love from those around us instead of just filling our bellies. 
And if we struggle with anything, she says we should enlist friends and family members. She says sticking to a healthy lifestyle is always easier with others to help push you. Finally, she says if you do go off track during the holidays, don't beat yourself up. Just use it as a learning opportunity and set a new goal and move forward. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Pro football coverage. I'm a Power school fan. Calories don't count count. During holidays. I wish they didn't count, but just the scale so. just lets you know they do. All right, so Cowboys fans hurting this morning. It's not just because they've eaten too much on Thanksgiving. Yeah, they're a little sore. The boys lose big, but the Texans, they get a nice win. RJ is here with the latest. RJ, explain. Oh, man, yes. Cowboys, tough, tough deal here being a Cowboys fan nowadays. They were coming off a really nice win over the Vikings. In fact, uh, Officer Solis and I, we were just talking about this and fighting for first place in the NFC East. And uh, things started off pretty well for the Cowboys. Andy Dalton back in the saddle today or yesterday. He's going deep and connects on this 54-yard touchdown to Amari Cooper. That puts the Cowboys ahead 10-7. But then Alex Smith drives Washington down the field. They take a lead here. Logan Thomas, nice tight end there. Uh, Alex Smith is uh, having one of the best comebacks ever. Comeback player of the year probably. Uh, second half, Zeke doing what Zeke's been doing all year. Fifth fumble of the season. He's had five fumbles his entire career. He's matched that just this season. Now, so earlier, guys, we did not show this play. I wanted to bring this one up here because this was really the changing, sort of the turning point of this game. What is going on? What is Mike McCarthy thinking here with this play? Cowboys down by four. They run a fake punt from the 20, and they do an end around to Cedric Wilson. It made no sense whatsoever. Completely changed the game. Am I right? No? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, obviously, look, Washington took full advantage of this. Antonio Gibson scores. Uh, he had back-to-back -back touchdowns there. He had three total in the game, and then the uh, clincher here for Washington, Montez Sweat, tipped, pick six, boom, Cowboys lose. They fall to three and eight. Is that a little gobble sound on there? I didn't realize that watching the game yesterday. Uh, Cowboys lose 41-16. to It's the first time they're swept by Washington since 2012. What happened with that play call? I have no idea. Okay, so after not being able to win back-to-back -back games all season long, hey, the Texans are able to do it in the past four days with their Turkey Day route of the Lions in Detroit. And hey, you knew things were gonna be good early on. J.J. Watt, love that dude, was able to snag that interception, return it for a touchdown. And then Deshaun Watson just took over, throwing for 318 yards and four touchdowns. That was a nice one earlier to Will Fuller. And then another one here, just for good measure, two touchdowns for Will Fuller. He had 171 yards receiving on just six catches. I played against him in fantasy football. That really hurt me. Uh, Texans win, 41-25. Take care of the Lions. They improve to 4-7. and seven. They host the Colts a week from Sunday. Interesting stuff, guys. Want to go back to the Cowboys. They were scheduled to play the Ravens next Thursday, but Baltimore, they've had a sort of this like mini outbreak of COVID mm -hmm. cases, so I don't know if that game's going to happen now. Now they're saying the Cowboys game may be moved back, but Cowboys kind of uh, lost their shot there to take over the division. That's fair. NFC least. <laughs> There you go. Thanks, RJ. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, turning to our resident Cowboys analyst and, you know, traffic expert. So, Officer Solis, how are you feeling this morning? I wasn't feeling good, but then I got to work with y'all guys. I feel a little bit Aww. better. Aww. Thanks, Max, Sarah, and Justin. Aww. Okay, <laughs> definitely getting busy out there. Uh, the rain is affecting traffic. Uh, we have this accident here. It's going to be IH-35 at Ritterman Road there in the Access Road. Uh, not affecting traffic on the main lanes, but still it's a big intersection. This accident, a rolled over vehicle northbound IH-35 south at Nogalitos. Please be careful if you're heading that way, but not causing too much traffic yet. Roadways looking very slick on 90 and 36 and 410 at 151. Thanks, Nick. And as we look at the drought monitor, we've we've talked a lot about this. We've been in a serious drought here in South Texas. In fact, an extreme drought as you get towards uh, Uvalde exceptional. Uvalde down to Carrizo Springs, even San Antonio in an extreme drought. So let's put the radar over top of this and show you that this is beneficial rain that we now have moving in here across South Texas. It's exactly what we needed. Most of it's been pretty light. It's not amounting to much, but at least it's there. And we'll continue to see some of this through the day today. So let's get a little closer look at the radar here. You can see sort of a area of moderate rain stretching from Uvalde to Hondo and then here in San Antonio. We've seen, seen some off and on very light rain. Everything's tracking off to the north and east. Got a couple pockets of moderate rain up towards Bernie. Out west, places like La Prior, Uvalde, Sabinal, all areas that truly need the rain, and it is coming down at this hour. 
as we go outside 67 degrees. There is a little bit of sun trying to shine through there off in the distance as we get our sunrise. Southeasterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy today, though. Clouds will probably hang on. And we're watching our frontal boundary, which right now sits up there across the hill country. It is through junction 53 there, but it will slowly work its way through the area today. That should help to generate some showers and storms, especially first half of the day. And you look behind it, there are some chillier numbers here. 29 in Amarillo, 39 in Lubbock, 47 in Abilene. And we've got an upper level low off to the west, too. So this is the energy we need to keep the rain going. So once this moves through tomorrow, our rain chance, chances actually come up. That, that'll start tonight into tomorrow morning. That's when the rain chances sort of peak. Tomorrow will be a damp, cloudy day for your Saturday. Here's how the forecast plays out. That frontal boundary moves south. This is around 10 o'clock. We see chances of showers and storms. That will move off to the south by the afternoon. So rain chances taper off a little bit here in San Antonio, but they'll pick up a little bit closer to the coast. And this is an area I think where we could see a couple of strong storms later today. Some small hail would be the main threat. There is a marginal risk for that. As we get into tomorrow or tonight, into tomorrow morning, we'll see the rain become more widespread. Showers and storms possible through the day tomorrow. Noontime, still some rain around, even around 5 o'clock. But we'll see that end west to east. Skies will clear. Sunday should be a relatively clear day. We mentioned that there is that marginal risk for some stronger storms today. It's low end, but it is there. We'll keep an eye on the radar for you. Otherwise, rainfall is going to be plentiful. We're talking about an inch here in San Antonio, potentially some bigger numbers off to the east, lower numbers off to the west, but we'll take anything at this point. And I'm glad that we're at least seeing something and that it's sort of a prolonged event here through tomorrow afternoon. 71 degrees at noontime, 50% chance of rain. Rain chances do come down a little bit this afternoon and then tomorrow up to 58. That's it, 80% chance of rain, 65 Sunday and clear. We'll see things cool down really early next week. Could see some freezing temperatures here in San Antonio Tuesday morning and then another chance of rain on Wednesday. So a lot going on there in seven day forecast, guys. All right. Thank, Thank you, Justin. 651, 67 degrees. All right, very excited to talk about this one. Here's the thing. We're going to be back here tomorrow morning, GMSA, 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, so you don't really need an excuse to watch us. But if you do, we have an interesting story about how you should grow out your hair. That is tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. The news you need to know before you go, BCSO tells us one man is dead after being hit by a train just after midnight on the train tracks near Madonna, Lacoste, and Shepherd Road. Bear County Sheriff's deputies tell us a man in his 30s was walking on the tracks with someone else when he was hit by the train. Paramedics did arrive, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Well, let's look at the radar. We've got uh, light shower activity north of San Antonio right now. We've seen some light showers even here in town and then more moderate rain out to the west. Some thunderstorms even across some of our eastern counties. So rain chance is pretty good first half of the day. They'll taper off a little bit this afternoon and then pick back up again tonight. And tomorrow we've got an 80% chance of rain on your Saturday. It'll be cloudy, cool, damp. Uh, that rain does move out by late tomorrow evening and it clears out on Sunday, but it'll be breezy and cooler. And then we've got some pretty chilly temperatures to start next week. We could see our first freeze here in San Antonio, potentially Tuesday morning, guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy your turkey taco leftovers. All right, we'll see you back here at 9 a.m.